does this look familiar? <laughs> We're going to do this week's video vlog style. Maggie is sleeping like she always does in that blanket. Um, I'm enjoying my coffee. It is a Tuesday morning. I work from home on Tuesdays. And um, so it's just going to be one of those days, right? Maggie's been playing in my hair. She's something else. She gets groomed this week. Um, I take her Friday morning and drop her off. And Lordy, does she need it. She's matted something awful because she's gotten into this new habit of rubbing herself on the carpet and she'll spin around in circles. If I can catch it on video, I will. Um, but it's hilarious. But it causes static and then it mats her hair. She's something else. Anyway, I wanted to say I am o overwhelmed with um, the amount of subscribers that I got recently um, from a small shout out that Melanie Thompson gave me. Um, she is such a sweet, sweet friend. I just, I love her. I'm so blessed that she's, um, that she's a part of my life and a part of my YouTube journey. And I'm just so grateful for her. Um, but she gave me a shout out and now I'm watching some of the people that um, came over from her channel that have YouTube channels. Um, I am binging the, um, the old so-and-so. <laughs> She's a hoot. I adore her. Oh my goodness. There is nothing more refreshing than um, having people just be themselves. You know, it's just, it makes me feel less intimidated by sharing my little bits with y'all. So, um, she's decorating her kitchen. I'm watching that this morning. Um, and it is just the, I just love her. I'm so, if nothing else, that's been the highlight, <laughs> highlight of the shout out. Um, I found another, another kindred spirit on YouTube. It's so funny. If we all lived in the same area, um, can you even imagine the damage we would do going out thrifting and antiquing together? It would just be, it would be quite the movement. <laughs> it would be quite the spectacle. <laughs> and I would love every second of it. Oh my goodness. Maybe we can make that a bucket list thing that one day we all meet up and have like a weekend, you know, in a, in a, you know, like all meet halfway somewhere and have like a creator weekend where we get to know each other in person a little bit. We hang out, we eat good food and we shop. <laughs> I think it would be amazing. <laughs> let me know what you think. <laughs> I'm good at planning stuff. So let me know. <laughs> so, um, I'm making up a casserole to take over to the boys and drop off, um, today. And every Tuesday, I fix them something and drop it off. Um, we also, Art's at the gym. I also need to, um, we're going to be dropping off his truck at some point this morning because it needs new tires. So, between work, um, I'm going to be doing this. Maggie, you need to behave. So, I have all my ingredients close at hand. We're going to be making a Dorito casserole. It's the, one of the boys' favorites. And what I like to do is always use my cast iron skillet. I'm going to have to put her in her pen. Maggie's gotten in this really bad habit of being very obsessive whenever I turn in, on the camera. Whenever I, Art and I talk, she's upset because she wants the attention. Whenever the kids call or anybody calls me, she's upset because she doesn't want me on the phone. And she doesn't like it when I film and I'm not holding her. So, she's gotten kind of bad. <laughs> Not gonna lie, she's gotten kind of bad. So anyway, we're making Dorito casserole because it's one of the boys' favorites. Um, I don't know who doesn't like a, a, a Dorito casserole. And I always like to use my cast iron Dutch oven whenever possible because it's just, cast iron is one of the best things that you can cook with. Um, some people are intimidated by using it. 
and I used to be, um, because before I learned how to cook well, um, I used to burn everything in a cast iron skillet. Now, um, my parents both knew how to cook and they cooked very well. And I just, I didn't, I didn't pick it up until later in life because my parents cooked really well. They, they fed us good. Anyway, cast iron's really good. I highly recommend using cast iron whenever possible. I, anyway, um, so I'm starting off with some ground beef. You can use as much or as little as you need. I'm making enough to fit in a nine by 13 pan, but because I'm delivering it, I'm not keeping it. I like to use the foil pans because my boys don't like to wash dishes and they're bachelors and they live together. So, and I don't like going over there and washing their dishes. So I make them use foil and disposable stuff whenever possible. So that's why it's going in here. But it, this is a recipe for a nine by 13 casserole. Um, it does not call for this. If you Google the recipe, and you can Google it and find a plethora of um, variations of this casserole. This is just what I like to add to it. Um, the garlic powder and the onion powder is something I use to all of my, I use it in every recipe when I'm browning hamburger. If it calls for browning hamburger, I'm using garlic and onion powder. And it's the cheap Walmart brand, nothing fancy. Um, but it just adds a little extra something. It takes it up a notch, just like with decorating, you know? You layer your food like you layer your um, vignettes. Just saying. I put some coarse salt in there, and I like fresh ground pepper, but in this instance, I'm just gonna go with ground pepper, just the generic brand. Um, it does have a different flavor from like the, the um, Fresh ground pepper is more of a pungent taste. So I like to finish with that, not cook with it. If I'm cooking, I'm gonna use just cheap ground pepper because it gives me more flavor, um, depending on the recipe, depending on your taste. So I'm just gonna brown this up and then after we get it browned, we're gonna add some other stuff too. Now I gotta cook it up on high because I wanna do this, I'm kind of in a pinch for time. You normally don't want to start off high. You want to bring your temperature up and then you want to drop it. I'm getting ready to do that. Um, typically, I'll start it on a medium because cast iron heats up nice and even. And once it gets to the temperature you want, it stays there. It does a really good job of maintaining. It has even distribution of heat. So, at this point, I'm going to add my kitchen's a mess. I'm gonna add some green pepper and I'm gonna add some onion. I'm using one pepper, one yellow onion. Now, if you like more pepper or you want a variation in color of pepper, like you want the reds and the yellows, go right ahead. If you like a little onion or a lot of onion, it's all preference. Put as much or as little as you want. But I'm gonna go ahead and add that so it can start to cook with the meat and get a little tender. I have not added my taco seasoning yet. I'm just at, I just added those base seasonings. And then I'm just gonna let that sit and simmer for a little bit. Look at that. And it's gonna still continue to cook the meat and all that good, all the goodness while I wash up some dishes. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and cover it, let it get, get going real good. And then we'll check back in on it in just a second. All right, let's see what this is looking like. Now, as you can see, I got a lot of uh, moisture that's built up in here. Now, the recipe will call for water because when you're adding taco seasoning, if you add it to dry meat, you're gonna get an overpowering, overpowering taste from the taco seasoning. So I like to not use water because water doesn't have flavor in and of itself, obviously. I like to get my water extracted from the peppers and the onions and a little bit of fat from the meat, and that gives me enough of the liquid that I need. And also I'm gonna be adding Rotel, so that's also gonna give me some moisture. Um, so I'm just gonna add, it's about at that point where I'm gonna add all my flavorings. First, I'm gonna add the black beans. I'm adding a can of black beans. If you don't like beans, you don't have to add the beans. 
it's personal preference, but this gives a little bit of an added flavor or added fiber. Um, it's a good health value, um, but it also makes it look a little bit prettier. It gives it some contrast for texture and contrast of, of what it looks like. You eat with your eyes before you eat with your mouth. So remember that when you're cooking, if you want things to look good. So you want it to look pretty, you layer just like with your decorating. I said that earlier. All right, so now that I have my beans, I'm on a medium high. I'm cutting it down a little bit lower because um, I really want to give it time to kind of marinate in there. And I'm gonna go ahead and add my rotel so it has time to kind of marinate again and bring some more flavors. Now, if you have one big can, I would use that, but basically it's gonna call for, for personal preference. I'm gonna tell you guys, I never measure anything. I don't measure. Even when it comes to the recipes I find online, I never follow it to the T. I know what flavors are good and what aren't, what I like, what I don't like. And you know, I've been cooking long enough that I tweak. I tweak it to my own, you know, and, and I also know the science behind things. You know, I know if I add, if I need something thicker, I can add flour or starch. If I need something lighter, I can add some broth or some water or, or beer <laughs> or something, you know? Um, so I don't measure. So I apologize. My recipes, I'm going to tell you when you see me cook, I'm going to tell you um, to Google the recipe and then, you know, look back at this video, get some good tips to do it. But you're better off Googling the recipe than me trying to put it in the description box because I don't have a recipe I actually follow. You know, it's all eyeball. I go, I, I, I use recipes as a suggestion, <laughs> not, not as a manual. So anyway, look at how gorgeous this looks. Look at this. I'll bring it in. Look at that. It's beautiful and it smells so good. Now, mind you, it's not even eight o'clock in the morning yet, <laughs> but oh my. So I'm gonna let this marinate a little bit. And as you can see, there's not a whole lot of liquid here and that's perfect. I don't want a lot. This is perfect. Um, and now would be a good time to go ahead and add my taco seasoning. And I just get the regular whatever's on sale, but I like buying it in the jar, not the packs, because I do use it often in a lot of recipes. It's got great flavor. Um, and if you don't have taco seasoning, you can add um, chili powder and paprika, and then your onion and your garlic and some salt and pepper, and there's your taco seasoning. No joke. That's pretty much what it is. Um, but I'm going to go ahead and sprinkle this in. Now, this is where you can always add more. You can't take it away. So, I put a good amount in, and then I mix, and then I taste. Sometimes I can also tell by the color. If it's not a good red color, then nah, I ain't got it yet. And it's not there yet. I'm going to add some paprika. Now that I mentioned it, I'm going to go ahead and add that. I might even add a little chili powder in here. Because that just adds another layer and a punch. You know? I keep my spices handy by here, the ones that I use most often. And I keep the ones that, um, like an overflow, when these run out, I just grab from here and replenish. I'll show you. Let me see if I can get you pulled down here. So this is my spice area. Look at that. This was thrifted. And I just keep my spices in here that I use most often for cooking. All right, so I've added some of that, I'm gonna continue to just kind of mix and taste. And at this point, it's a weight gain. You just really want the flavors to marinate together, marry, marinade. You want the flavors to marry together. So, um, I'm just gonna let that do its thing for a minute and then we're gonna start layering the casserole. All right, I'm gonna lift you up here for a second. This is all done. I have turned it off, pushed it back off the burner. I'm going to let that sit a minute. I have tasted it. I am in, oh, that is so good. So good. I'm going to get a spatula. Let me 
me see, which one do I want to use today? All right. So, <clears throat> got my handy dandy spatula. Here's another thing that I do with this casserole that most of the recipes do not call for. What they tell you to do is to mix sour cream in with your meat mixture. I don't like doing that for a couple of reasons. One, it just makes it watery. Two, my kids don't like a lot of sour cream, um, so I disguise the sour cream. Sour cream, actually, if you take your sour cream, and I'm gonna make my, this will be my top layer. So I'm gonna take my cheese, and I'm gonna put, now this is a large bag, it's a one pound bag. So I'm gonna do about half of the cheese in a bowl. I'm gonna point you down. So you're not gonna see my pretty face, you're gonna see this. I'm gonna take about half this cheese, my hands are clean, and I'm gonna put it in the bowl. I'm reserving enough cheese to sprinkle on top to make it pretty. So maybe a little bit more than half is what I'm saving for reserve. And I do have more than half, there you go. And I do have some extra in the fridge if I tend to run out. I have some leftover sour cream and I opened a new one. And this is like, I don't measure, I'm sorry, but I'm just gonna get it, um, I'm just gonna mix it together and the consistency I'm looking for is almost like a mushy cheese ball. I save this stuff for my crafting, so I'm gonna wash that up, take it down to my craft room. Um, so I'm gonna, and I'm going to be patient. I might add more, or I, you know, I can always add more, I can't take anything out. So start with the least amount and then work up to what you might need. Now, if you're doing this for the first time, give yourself some grace because, you know, you might not get it right, right off the bat. You know, you're gonna have to add and add and add till you get your consistency. But look at how this is kind of turning into a nice thick incorporated ball. The sour cream is kind of acting like a glue to add, to hold all that cheese together. Because this, this is going to be my top layer. And it's just gonna give a little extra moisture to the cheese and a little um, extra flavor to the cheese so that it cooks really well and melts really well on the top. And then of course, on top of that, we're gonna put just the layer of cheese that will give you a nice little ooey gooey moment. You can see, see what I'm doing. I'm still learning y'all, I'm still learning. Learning with the filming. All right, so I'm gonna start, I grease this up, I did spray. And you crush, I got the family party size and I lightly crushed it. So there's big chunks and little chunks. And I'm hoping to get two layers. So I'm just gonna layer the bottom sparingly. I'm not gonna put a whole lot on the bottom. Just, just enough, just enough. <clears throat> and then I'm gonna start layering. And while I'm doing my cheese mixture. And think of it like icing, icing a cake. I'm gonna get another little spatula to help kind of move it about a little. So I'm just gonna get some and I think I'm gonna do little bits along here like that. and try to connect my dots, if, if that makes sense. Try to connect the dots. All right, I'll start with that. You 
can see, I still have open areas. I could, if I wanted, go back and, and make more of this mixture up, which you know what, I, I probably will. I might. Although I do, tonight I'm making some pork chops and I wanna do garlic mashed potatoes. I might wanna use some sour cream in that for that. So, you know what? And the boys don't really like sour cream, so I'm just gonna go around the edges, heavier on the edges with this cheese. That's what I'm gonna do. And it'll, it'll be fine. It'll be fine. It will be all right. Nobody will know. <laughs> what I think I'm gonna do is uh, put this up, this video up tomorrow. So you'll see it on Wednesday. Um, I'd like to try to do two videos a week. Um, it doesn't always work out that way for me because of just the sheer like busyness of life. You know, I've been really, I'm great at doing one video a week. It's hard to come up with content. I'm, you know, not exactly sure what everybody likes. So, and, uh, even though I'm not too concerned about making sure everybody's happy because you can't please everybody. I might as well use all this cheese. You can't please everybody, but I at least don't want to, I don't want to post stuff that nobody wants to see. So I, uh, I'm not sure of what all you want. So if you want in the comments, let me know, do you like days in the life? Do you like the cooking videos? Um, do you like the thrift hauls? Now the thrift hauls and the decorate with me's and things like that, those are a given. I can show you some craft tutorials. I can do that. If you want to see me craft, um, I've done those before. I just don't do them regularly. All right, so I'm just going to crush up the rest of what's in here. Kind of fine, so it gives a bit of a crunch. And I'm sorry you're not going to see this all done. You're not going to see it plated. We'll be lucky if the boys think to take a picture and send it to me. We'll be lucky because I doubt that'll happen. They'll be too tired and excited to eat. Typically what they do, they, they both of the boys can cook. My oldest can cook a lot better than my youngest. Um, and he tends to take the lead as far as the meal prep and planning, but they order out a lot, you know, they bring home food, order out, eat leftovers or eat frozen stuff. That's what they tend to do. They're typical, typical bachelor boys. So this is what it looks like. I'll take you down so you can see. Let me see if I can do that. Okay. So, I'm not good at doing it this way. Let me turn the camera around. All right. So, this is what it looks before it goes into the oven. It looks, you know, pretty normal like a casserole. I'm going to cover it with foil and get it ready to transport over to the boys. While I'm at it, I'm going to show you how I clean that cast iron real quick. Maggie, no. So, I use coarse salt and I just get that in the bottom. You never want to use dish soap, and you never want to use a scouring pad. You never want to do that. Just use an old sponge, and you're going to use that salt to do the work. And you're just going to rub. I'm doing it with one hand. And look at, look at the salt do its job. See that? Salt does its job. And then you're going to want to rinse it really, really good, because salt also can corrode. So... You want to be careful doing doing that. Now, if it's really burnt bad, you're going to want to put some salt water back on the stove and let it boil, and it'll loosen everything, and then you can wipe it clean. But that's all you do. I'm just going to, I'm doing it with one hand, so bear with me. But look, it comes clean. I'm going to finish rinsing it, and I'm going to put it away, and that is it. This video is getting long. I um, 
I don't know how I'm going to narrow all this stuff down. And when it's all said and done and you guys see everything, I'll be surprised after I finish editing it. I'm going to be like, wow. Anyway, um, a lot going on today. Today is Friday. <laughs> Fast forward. Anyway, I just picked Maggie up from the groomers and she took out her bow. She looks completely different. They had to shave her completely, which I'm not surprised because of all the matting. So she's shaved. She looks like a little drowned rat. Let me show you. Look, say, look at me, look at me. <laughs> she's completely shaved, but here's the cute part. Look at this. I'm gonna point you down. Do you see? She has glitter pink nails. <laughs> how, how cute is that? So her groomer, Charlotte, has groomed her since she was born. Um, so Maggie's coming up on a year old. So Charlotte has been um, doing her grooming for a, a year now. And um, so she painted her nails for Valentine's Day and her birthday. So... Maggie has all four paws painted glitter pink. I can't believe that she stayed still long enough to have that done. And it was a complete surprise to both of us. It's not like I requested it or anything. Um, it was just a nice little, a nice little treat to have, to pick her up and see their nails were painted. I have never had a dog's nails painted before. Anyway, she has her nails painted. I've got so much to show you. I don't know how much she's gonna let me do, so I'm gonna hold her, because we just got back. So she's still a little shaky. She needs to reacclimate to being home. You know, you know how it is. But I wanna show you uh, a project that I'm working on and some thrifted items that I found. And, um, I also still need, at some point here in the very near future, I would like to film, you know, a house tour. Um, but it's going to be a little bit before I'm ready for that. If I can get one room completed the way that I like um, and feel confident in, like confident that I'm done, not confident that I'm good at what I do, but confident, <laughs> confident that I'm done <laughs> and nothing substantial is going to change, I will film just the room. But Right now, I don't have that. I'm still, I'm still plugging and playing and playing with ideas. And here's how I kind of, um, I don't, I don't box myself into a, 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 a genre or a, a decorating style. I don't lock and block myself into that. Um, I like what I like, and the. Furniture pieces, the colors, the pictures, the artwork, the baskets, the, the dishes, the whatever, whatever goes into this house, it's because it said something to me. It evoked some kind of feeling in me. Maybe, maybe it's, you know, homey, maybe it's comforting, maybe it makes me happy, maybe it sparks a memory. I don't know. But it definitely does something to me. And that's why it's in the house and why I choose it. And maybe that item is farmhouse. And maybe that item is primitive. And maybe that item is art deco. And maybe that item is industrial. I don't know. <laughs> and I don't care. All I care about is that I'm putting things together in a way that make me happy. And that my family um, also enjoys and it makes them happy. So that's really my only aim. So... And I say all that, you old subscribers have known that about me from day one, um, but I haven't been doing this for long, so I'm gaining more and more subscribers every day, which is awesome, and I'm hi and welcome. I'm so glad you're here, um, but it's nice for those new people to hear, too, that, you know, I'm not about just one style. You're not going to find one particular style on this channel. You're going to find a lot of things. Um, a lot of different styles kind of intertwine. And I envy people who know exactly what their, um, what their style of decorating is and they're all in and, and they're good, you know, they're focused. I'm not, I've got decorators ADHD going on. I am everywhere. I see it, I like it. I'm like, oh, how can I make this work, you know? <laughs> but that's the fun of decorating and that's the fun of thrifting and antiquing, so. Let me show you, <clears throat> let me show you some things that I've gotten. First, we're going to start with this project. So, Melanie Thompson, my dear friend Melanie, and excuse the mess everywhere, 
she has a picture that she thrifted that had refurbished or salvaged barnwood frame with a quilt um, in, inside of it as the picture. And I love that so much and I wanted it so bad. <laughs> um, so I decided to make my own. Now all the, I used to quilt, so I know how to quilt, but I'm not gonna stitch this because I just don't have the patience or the time for it. And Maggie does not have the patience for me to sit down. If I'm sitting, she's on my lap. There ain't no needle involved in that. We can't do that. So I'm going to, I went to Hobby Lobby, bag is there, and I got some fabric blue that I'm gonna use to secure the pieces down. And then I'm gonna go ahead and frame this. I have enough fabric um, to make a, a, quite a few of these. And I thrifted the frame and I thrifted the um, all of the fabric. Let me show you what else I got. Let me move you up. It's been a good couple of weeks thrifting. It really has. So um, I'm just gonna, we're just gonna roll with it. I picked this up. Of course, this is not a plate stand and I don't know if I'm gonna keep it this color or if I'm gonna paint it black. I'm leaning more towards leaving it like this and hanging it up because I got, and it's broken, I do need to uh, glue one of the spin spindles. I could pop back in, but I still need to secure it so it doesn't come out. And there's one stuck in here where it broke off at the little part. I need to drill a new hole and re-secure that. So that's gonna be a little bit of a project before it goes up, but I have that. And this is, this was an amazing deal. Hold on, let me show you. I went to my favorite antique mall. It's called Past and Present Antiques and Collectibles. That's where I'm gonna be having my booth eventually. Um, and of course the owner was there, so I got to chit chat with her. But anyway, I got, I gotta put her down so I can show you. So Maggie, why don't you go, go get a drink, go get a drink. Um, I got this entire basket full of these kitchenware goodies, primitive, antique, vintage cooking wear goodies for $15. Um, the basket's in great shape. You can always use another basket, right? But here's what came in this. I mean, there's this one, look at that. Is that not gorgeous? I mean, this is gonna take me a while just to show you all these things. So this video is gonna be a little long, y'all. It's gonna be a little long. Look at that. I think this was like for Correct me if I'm wrong on these. I have not Google lensed any of them or anything. I don't know um, much about them, but I think it might've been like to, when you're canning, you know, to help get the cans in and out of that hot water. I'm not hundred percent sure, but there's that. I love that handle. And I know, look at this. This is um, a press. It's an old kitchen press. Look at that. Is that, and that's kind of heavy, it's cast iron. Um, Maggie, just wait, please. I think this is a cast iron pan to get in and out of, um, to get something in and out of like a cast iron stove or a fire pit kind of thing. So that's what, and this is cast iron as well. It has something on the back. Actually, it has a number, it has a number I don't know if you're going to be able to see it. Hold on. I don't want to mess up my quilting thing. Let me see if I can. Do you see that number on there? Probably not. I'll try to insert a picture so you can see the number on that. Maggie, come here. <laughs> she just got to have a mama. This is not so vintagey. I think even Art was like, um, I don't think that really fits. <laughs> I could grub it up. He goes, we can actually use that. I'm like, no, we're, we're not, we're not using this. <laughs> but um, anyway, that came in there. I, I don't know the rhyme or reason of why things were in there. Look at that. I like the handle. This is kind of coming apart. So I need to be careful with it, but look at that. I think they had some of these individually priced at one point. Um, but anyway, there's that one. And then of course, you gotta have your, your grater, right? Look at that. It's already just so nice and rusty. All that rusty goodness. 
Look at this old potato masher. Look at that. Is that not adorable? I'm sorry, I think that is cute. And then this last little thing. This is like when you're doing the flour and kind of cutting in your butter and stuff. See, I know a little bit about bacon. <laughs> All right, so those, um, I only have one more kitchen vintage item. Let me put all these back in here real quick and move this out of the way. I wish I would have thought about um, doing this in a better fashion, but I want to get this video out and ready um, for you guys. And I have um, a very busy weekend, so it's either today or not getting done. So <laughs> we're doing it. Um, I did not thrift all these things all on the same day. Uh, everything I'm showing you is like a collective thing. I've done this, you know, it's been, it's been in the process. So, um, I got a set of these, two of these for $5, not $5 each. Both of them were $5 and they're candle holders, but I love that detail. This is a metal detail. And then it's just a wood base and it's got a nice felted bottom to it. It's gorgeous. And they came like this, no candle, no top or anything, but sitting with it was this, and this was a dollar. And I have one here at the house. So here's my plan. I'm going to have to put some, some kind of felt holder or something on there to make sure it doesn't slip too much. But look at that. Isn't that nice? Will I paint it black, the base of it? I don't know, it's possible. I might. Right now I'm not thinking I will, but I might, I don't know. I like the contrast, I can't have everything black. I would like everything black better, I can't have everything black. And then I also picked up for 99 cents this. It needs to be cleaned. Um, it has a little goose on one side. I don't mind the goose. I'm not into the geese thing, but I don't mind it. I can always turn it this way, but I love the roughness of the scalloped edge. It's, it's like, it, it's seen better days, but I like the fact that it's seen better days. I like things imperfect, imperfect. And then I found this little metal chicken. This will go, I know exactly where I'm putting this. No questions about it. It was 99 cents. Goodwill. Also at the Goodwill, I got this nice little Americana basket. Very cute, can't wait to use it for, definitely for the 4th of July, summer, that kind of thing. But um, I also picked up these things. Now, my first thought were these are like the Colonial Day primitive, you know, leave them by your bedside when, you know, when you didn't have electricity back then, I'm sure they needed to carry a candle around and maybe that's what this is. But I noticed that they have these little cutouts right here. So I'm thinking they should have slid into something. So maybe they slid into, you know, a uh, wall sconce. So that's what it looked like and you could switch them out. They were 99 cents a piece. And two of these were gold, like this gold plated. They're plastic, obviously, but they're made to look gold and they're a good heavy plastic. This one's also plastic, but it's not gold. It's a slightly different color. And again, it has that, I'm thinking that it must slide onto something. Anyway, I thought they were interesting. I went ahead and picked them up. Will I use them in a vignette? Will I sell them? I don't know, but I got them. Then, while I was at Hobby Lobby picking up the glue, um, I came across this. Is this not adorable? It has sage, rosemary, I don't know, what's that one? Anyway, what is that one? Spearmint. So these faux plants in this nice little crate box in the terracotta pots, and it was on clearance Marked down from $40 on clearance for 10. So I put it in my cart and I didn't take it out of my cart. It came home. Um, I wanna, let's see, what else did, did I get anything else interesting in here? Nope, that's all just homespun, the glue, and uh, I got some extra brushes and thing, crafting supplies. I got crafting supplies. Okay, I'm not done, I'm not done, <laughs> I'm not done. Um, then 
I'm, I know I'm being rude going off camera. I'm so sorry. I'm not, I'm not prepared for this. <laughs> Look at this. Look at that. It is a primitive bowl that still has the feet. What don't I like about this? Um, that it has this shiny finish. So what am I gonna do? I'm gonna take it down, and it's already got a good start. I'm gonna take it down to its natural, natural wood. That's what I'm gonna do. And I'm super excited to, to do that. And I'm looking for these because I have the shelf that you put these in. <laughs> I have the primitive shelf that you put them in. And I want to get enough of these that I can put them in there. And y'all know I broke my, my very first one. I broke my very first one. These are expensive and I have to thrift them and they're hard to come by. I will say, I wish I would have filmed when I stopped at the past and present this last time because it was full of Crocs and Dobles and just, if you're into country and you're into primitive, this was like walking, I was, ah, oh, I walked in and it was just, it was like I had walked into Heaven's Gates. It was amazing. Oh, I could have stayed there for so much longer and bought so much more stuff, but I'm on a budget and I'm not going to do that. So if it's meant to be, it'll still be there when it's in my budget to go back and get it. So I got the things that I knew I could not live, leave the store without and I left the rest there in hopes that it will be there when I go back. Um, so this is a project and I'm going to set that down. And as you know, I am... I needed three pieces to finish off the copper parameter, the copper molds um, are around the parameter of my kitchen. <laughs> and I needed three more and I found two. I found two. Um, and cause I'm holding Maggie, it's gonna be hard for me to show you. But this one is just, um, isn't it cute? It's fluted, it's got the fruit on it. And it's, it's real, that one's real copper. It's kind of heavy. And then I got this one. That one was $6. Normally, I'm not gonna pay over $3 for one of these tins, and $3 is a lot, because I can usually find them at the Goodwill, not in great shape, but I can find them at the Goodwill for 99 cents. But I got this one um, for $3. That I have not had, a, had good luck in finding these, and the ones that I'm finding are too big. It needs to fit in a space between my uh, molding and the door frame. So that's the last little bit. Um, so it's gotta be narrow enough, small enough to fit in that small space. So I picked up that. Now I have been struggling. I'm gonna move you out a little bit here. I have been struggling. Let me see how far back I go. Okay, here we go. I have been struggling with this space and this space on either side of this large opening. We have this beautiful tray ceiling in every room and beautiful molding, and I wanna do it justice. Um, so things can't be too big, too small. Anyway, I played. You see how right over there I was playing. I was putting those things there thinking maybe that would work, but no, no, and I already have the, the archways going on there, excuse the mess, this is real light. Um, so I, I didn't wanna copy that there and I'm over the sconces. I have a lot of sconces and I love them, but I'm kinda over it. I wanna add things that um, either art, really nice artwork or shelves that I can put vignettes together for. And so originally I was looking for some shelves to go here, but I found those, mm-hmm, yep. Yep, look at that. Now, I don't have to bring you that close. What am I doing? I hung this one to see if I liked it, and I love it. it. As soon as I hung it, I was like, that's it. That is it. And I got the other one. It is a set. I got them for $16, the set. And this one will go on the other side. Look at that, look. Oh my God. I am in love. I don't think they are signed. I believe they were hand painted. Kimberly, Kimberly Polson. 
I'm going to look it up so I can see because I want to know how much they're worth, what they originally go for. Um, they are very light. They are not heavy at all. They seem to be hollow in the middle, um, I would imagine, because they sound hollow. But they have this nice wood finishing all the way around them. And I just love them. I am so excited, so excited to decorate. I actually did forget to show you one more thing. You probably saw it as I was scanning everything. I got these pillows. Uh, the Both of them were $5, somewhere in $5. I think it was $5 because one was three, yeah, three and two, so $5. Look at how gorgeous these are. Aren't they beautiful? These were also at the um, Past and Present Antiques and Collectibles store. And these, I think, will go really great on... Now, of course, they're different sizes, but that's okay. I don't mind that they're two different sizes. I'm going to put one on one chair and one on the other. Um, I just love this texture, this textile. I just love it. It's beautiful. I also forgot to show you this beautiful box I picked up. Let me move. And I did rearrange this little kitchen area. Look at this beautiful box. Um, this was, I think the price is still on the bottom. Yep, $3. So look at that. It is just gorgeous. I love it. And I've already cleaned it. <laughs> already got it. I left the, I like to leave the price on when I can because it helps me to remember when I'm sharing things or somebody asks me where I got it or how much it is. If it's not in the way and I don't need to take it off, then I don't. So. There's my, I'm not done with this fin yet, but there it is. And that's where I put that box. Um, I think, I think that is it as far as where my projects are standing, where the rooms are going, uh, my thrift and haul, all of that. I think that's going to do it for this video. Um, I don't know what else to show you. <laughs> so anyway, hopefully I can edit this video down so it's not too awful long. Um, I'm just going to have to go back and look at all the footage that I've done this week and just kind of pick the, the highlights of it and kind of blend it together because it's just a mod podge of stuff. And then, um, hopefully next week it'll be a more cohesive video. Um, I will plan maybe a, um, maybe we'll do a decorate with me. Maybe that's what I'll do. I'm not hundred percent sure yet. Don't hold me to it. Um, so anyway, until next Sunday when we do all this lovely mess again. <laughs> Thank you for watching. Thank you for subscribing. Continue to subscribe, share, and like the video, and I will see you next Sunday.